Now, following the shooting in New Jersey on Wednesday, we're once again reminded of how deadly and toxic racism can really be. For the past few years, one of the foremost organizations fighting against anti-Semitism has been the Students Supporting Israel, or the SSI. And joining us now is Rudy Rachman, Israel, uh, Israeli rights activist and the founder of SSI at Columbia University. Hello. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining Hi. us. So first, your videos have just gone absolutely viral. Tell us a little bit about how you started combating anti-Semitism in the United States. Right, so I joined the army in 2011 as a lone soldier in the paratroopers, and when I got out, I started school at UCLA before transferring to Columbia, and that's when I realized that the anti-Israel movement on campus wasn't actually pro-Palestinian. Now, what do I mean by that? They don't actually talk about Palestinian suffering, dying by the thousands in Syria, hundreds of thousands of refugee camps in Lebanon, suffering in, in Jordan or on the border of Gaza and Egypt. They only talk about Palestinian suffering if it has to do with Israel. And of course, they also take it completely out of context of, yeah, there were three wars waged by the surrounding Arab nations to ethnically cleanse the Jewish population, and the consequences of those wars is the status quo that exists today. Now, the status quo is unjust for all sides and should end. However, when you take out a suffering and you blame it all on the other side, that's kind of what anti-Semitism is. It's finding the suffering source of pain of mm -hmm. the population and blaming that on the Jews. So I realized that that's what was going on uh, in their minds, but the way that they were spreading it to the rest of the campus is they were using something called intersectionality, meaning finding the minority groups on college campuses and finding their source of suffering and then saying Israel right. is either the same thing that you are experiencing or even more so directly causing your suffering. So they'll go to the Black Student Association and say, not only is uh, Israel doing the same thing to our community with Israeli brutality and IDF racism and all sorts of things, but also the New York State Police Department is trained by the IDF to kill black people. Now we obviously know that these things aren't true, but this is the message that they're saying. And the biggest problem is that the Jews are doing nothing about it. Okay, so before you continue, yeah. I would like to see a clip of one of your videos. Your people colonized the land. When did they colonize the, the land? In 1948. In 1948, they decolonized the land from the British. Oh, yeah. So who are the Palestinians? We don't belong there. The don't Palestinians lie. do belong no, there. No, we don't belong there. You know why? Don't because lie. they're now responsible don't for the lie. crimes that their ancestors did. Don't lie. Yeah. Don't try to put I just that on my people. You, I just told you, I believe Look, Palestinians Netanyahu should have a right. Netanyahu and Trump are Netanyahu. best friends. That's no, no, no. Netanyahu is what you represent. I don't represent you Netanyahu. You represent Israel. So you represent, you represent you Netanyahu? Represent Abu Mazen? No, he's not. We so, don't have a leadership. So if I can agree, we don't have a leadership. If I could be fine with Your people are terrorists. Okay? Israel is a terrorist state. Israel is a terrorist state. All right. So yeah, we see a lot of frustrated anger and, and kind of animosity there. It but, doesn't, is, is the dialogue always like that or do you get, you know, some some nice kind of conversation as well? So, so it's usually either two things when someone's anti-Israel. Either they are misinformed and they're open to hearing and having dialogue and maybe they don't yet right away agree, but I'm able to communicate with them and get them to see a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Or there are people like the person in this video that doesn't matter what you say, what you show, Israel is the source of evil in the world. And then that's the moment that we need to kind of expose them intellectually and ideologically to show where their holes are in their arguments and that's when they get frustrated themselves and start cursing and so okay on. so that's where I'd like to bring in some you know a news story that recently came out Trump uh, recently signed an executive action um, that now categorizes Jews as an ethnic minority rather than a religious group and this has been very controversial um, among the Jewish community in the states can you talk to us a little bit about what your reaction was to that and, and what you think it means in terms of how it will impact um, the movement against anti-Semitism. So there are two things. First of all, we have to understand that Judaism is not a religion. And I say this always. Now, what is a religion? It's a belief system and a God, deity, book, or prophet. So religions start somewhere and a belief system crosses over different borders, offer over different nations, and spreads to different people. So if you have an Argentinian Christian, a Nigerian Christian, and a Chinese Christian, totally different people. Maybe they have the same belief, but different histories, different and aspirations in different cultures. Jews are not a religion that crossed over borders. They're an actual native people from Judea that were forcefully displaced from their homeland that spread all over the world. And in order to maintain their identity, they created a portable suitcase called Judaism. And ism is a man-made thing of Judea, becoming known as Judeans, okay. us, our people. And we packed in our language, our culture, our history, our value system, our relationship to our higher power, and the aspirations of one day coming back home. And that's what Judaism is. It's not a secondary religion. It's our primary identity. Now, that doesn't mean we can't live amongst other societies and be productive. Right, so why, why is there backlash against the idea that 
Jews would be established or considered an ethnic minority because that's essentially what you're saying that right. Jews are, right? Because a lot of Jews in the diaspora do not understand their own identity. They think Judaism is kind of a secondary thing and all of a sudden when they're told, no, you're a descendant of a people from Judea, you're the native descendants from this place, like your culture, value system, everything is about this place. We pray towards Jerusalem. We say next year in Jerusalem, we smash the glass when we get married to represent the destruction of our uh, holy okay. site to one day come back home. Everything that we do has been created in order to to preserve who we were, Lidova Do and Shana Babu Shalem, to come back to Jerusalem. And they don't understand that, so they have an immediate rejection to it. So if there's any one last message that you could give to our audience about what it takes um, to combat anti-Semitism, what would that message be? Because we're sadly running out of time here. So I'll sort of relate it to what happened now with Trump and the, and the legislation. Um, a lot of people see this as like, finally, we have a great accomplishment that now it's official that we're seen as this. And oftentimes the Jewish community and institutions tend to go to the power in order to kind of fix our things. But what we're not focused on is the younger generation, right? College campuses represent the future intellectual and political class of the next generation. Those that will be influencers, the future politicians, the future people in TV and business and lawyers and that's where the conversation needs to be having and we're, we're trying to fix things from the top instead of from the bottom and the bottom will one day represent the top so passing this legislation may be good on the short end but if we don't influence the next generation and us as Jews rise up with our allies to be able to take our future into our own hands then this legislation won't meet much in the future all right thank you so much for joining thank us you. thank you Later.